I have been told by a counselor that I have BPD after first meeting this person. I've had a psychiatrist tell me I could kind of see it, my autism, but I don't think a diagnosis would be important for you. It is very hard to get a diagnosis as a female on the spectrum. I've always been very quiet and non-talkative. People have always told me since childhood that I need to speak up more and that I need to speak more. Hello everyone, how's everybody doing? So I wanted to talk to you today about being a female on the autism spectrum. Uh, there's quite a few topics I'm going to cover, but basically I'm just going to list off um, autism, my personal autism traits. And I say they're my personal autism traits because while they're similar to other traits of people who have autism, everybody's different. So everybody experiences it differently. Hence the term neurodiversity. So I'm just going to um, explain how it affects me. Excessive loud talking or whispering makes me very anxious. Being in any place where there's even a small crowd bothers me with sensory overload. All the sounds just blend together into one giant unnerving noise and it amplifies. I often tend to over explain things in great detail and leave people thinking, well, I didn't want to know all that. I can't function when I'm rushed. I have to do things thoroughly. People often have a hard time understanding why I can't just hurry up and do it already. Executive functioning. It takes me longer to complete tasks than the average person. It takes me longer to process information as well. For example, if you tell me a whole list of things you can get done within say half a day or half an hour, it takes me at least twice as long. People confuse me as lazy, but it just takes me longer to put one foot in front of the other, so to speak. It takes me longer to process. It is in this way also that I get easily distracted, redirected, or derailed from what I am doing. I can never be distracted from a process I am in the middle of. Otherwise, I have to go back to square one. Sometimes because of these distractions or derailments, as I like to call them, happen so often that I give up and just don't do anything that I want to do or need to get done. I do not put one foot in front of the other because all of it is just too exhausting. Facial expressions. It's hard to tell by my facial expressions whether or not I am experiencing positive emotions. A lot of times when I am smiling, my face is not, or vice versa, when my face is smiling, it could mean that I'm just nervous or, you know, something uncomfortable is going on. Communication and socializing. I am very quiet. I'm often mislabeled as shy. I seldom find the right words to say in time during conversation. I like to think things through before I say it. But most often, the topic of conversation changes rapidly in social situations. I prefer to just listen to people and make deep connection with people rather than make meaningless conversation. I am introverted. I do not believe that my style of communication is wrong. It just needs to be better understood. My voice. Because I am a quiet person, my voice often goes unheard, but I believe that there are a million ways in which a person can express their voice besides just verbally and vocally. I think part of the responsibility is, is up to others to listen better and to accept diverse ways of communicating and socializing as equally valid. Hearing things like, speak up, why are you so quiet, or we need to hear more from you, are never helpful. They are humiliating, in fact. The way I present myself, I dress comfortably, shorts, pants, t-shirts. I have short hair. Tight clothing makes me uncomfortable and oftentimes physically ill. Certain materials bother me as well. I do not wear makeup as it bothers my skin and makes me feel like I can't breathe. Also, 
I am a firm believer in the fact that beauty comes from within. Because I present myself this way, people sometimes disregard my thoughts as invalid and think that I am just complaining about my existence. I observe this fact through various people's reactions to things I talk about and post online. Why is diagnosis important for me? Because it will help me take ownership of my own identity. The more people with the diagnosis, the more proof there is that neurodiversity exists, that there is far more than just one or two different brain wirings that make up a normal functioning human mind. <clears throat> Other reasons include resources, guidance, camaraderie, and friendships. Getting a diagnosis is really tough. No psychiatrist or specialist have any knowledge or experience of diagnosing ASD in women or autism spectrum disorder in women or girls, or at least that's what it feels like to me, that there's very little um, experience out there. So it's hard to get a diagnosis. Self-diagnosis gets invalidated often. You get judged and talked down to. No one believes you. I want to better be able to communicate with you guys, neurotypicals. We need to understand each other's languages in order to better understand each other's ways of existing in this world and communicating in this world. Another autism trait of my autism experience is that I don't always understand and most often don't understand the difference between rhetorical questions and genuine questions or questions where the asker already knows the answer versus a question where the asker is genuinely asking the answer and does not know it. In this way, I have repeatedly been subtly manipulated by people seeming to be polite. So that is my experience with autism or being on the autism spectrum or having Asperger's. Um, if you want to know what neurodiversity is and my views on it, um, you can refer to um, other resources. There's plenty of resources out there. I think I've also made other videos. I have made other videos talking about it and kind of describing it and explaining the concept of it. Um, and I wanted to share with you guys today this book called Asper Girls by Rudy Simone. Um, it's an excellent book. Now, I, I'm not affiliated with the author. This is not sponsored or anything at all. I just want to show you guys that it's a great book to read. It's a great resource if you're a woman and you think you might have Asperger's or are on the spectrum. And um, there's a great section on here for parents. Um, if you have a girl who's on the spectrum or who might be on the spectrum or have Asperger's, great advice in here. And I wanna note that um, this is, take it for parents, Take advice on understanding your girl on the spectrum. Don't try to change who she is as a person or how she uniquely functions. Do not, please do not try to change how she uniquely functions. Um, just try to understand her better. And that's all this is, you know. When you accept information about how to interact with or treat your child or a grown up adult with autism, you should look at it as trying to understand how they function differently, uniquely, um, and not to try to understand how to change them or fix them because there's nothing to fix. It's just, a di it's a different operating system. And as I always, always, always say, there's a million different ways to communicate. Um, just because our society places the most importance on verbalizing or vocalizing doesn't mean that's the only way. There's nonverbal people, there's semi-verbal people. Um, and I just suggest do your research. Uh, do your research. And it gives a list in the back on page 230, 231 on all the different traits of females on the spectrum. Possible traits. There's more. Um, these include appearance and personal habits, intellectual giftedness, education, vocation, emotional and physical, and social relationships. And 99% of these I fit to a T. Um, so I'm just going to read some of them. 
dresses comfort comfortably due to sensory issues and practicality. That is me, 5,000%. Will not spend much time on grooming and hair. Hairstyles usually have to be wash and wear. Yep. If it can't be done one, two, three real quick, I ain't doing it. Can be quite happy not grooming at all times. Um, can be quite happy not grooming at all at times. Yeah, I mean, I have better things to think about and do. Now, it, you, you gotta keep yourself groomed. I mean, there's an extent where it's like, okay, gross, you take a shower. <laughs> but I mean, I don't place import, importance on spending all day like grooming and doing up my hair and does this outfit look good? It's, you know, I like doing other things. Eccentric personality may be reflected in appearance. Now, I don't know that can be me, and it might not. Um, yes, I have an eccentric personality, a personality that exists outside the norm, but I mean, I don't know. I guess that's all in the eye of the beholder, I guess. Is youthful for her age and looks, dress, behavior, and tastes. And again, for me, I think I mask in certain in certain situations that make me appear more mature. But in a lot of ways, I I'm not really at the same level as people my age. Under the intellectual giftedness, education, and vocation, one of them is maybe highly educated, but will have had to struggle with social aspects of college may have one or many partial degrees. So true. I had a very hard time getting through college. One, because socialize, socializing was very hard for me, a time when people are having parties and having friends and kind of figuring out who they are. Um, I was very isolated and withdrawn and people didn't really flock to me that much or they didn't understand me and they didn't want to hang out with me or whatever. Um, and that kind of, the emotional effects of that kind of affected my work and my will and my drive. You kind of have to have a lot of drive um, to complete a college degree. It's no walk in the park. And it costs a lot of money. Um, and um, people with autism on the spectrum have very difficulties, as I said, um, getting and keeping jobs. And having a job is very important unless you come from a well-to-do family. Um, making money is important while you're going to school, which is very tough because you don't, you already don't get sleep when you're in college because of the workload. And then having a job on top of it is, adds extra. So it's a little bit tougher for those of us on the spectrum. So needless to say, going to college between 2001 and 2016, off and on, different colleges, different degrees, I finally achieved my bachelor's degree in 2016. So that was a, a huge feat for me. Um, emotional and physical traits. Emotionally immature and emotionally sensitive. Yes, that's very true about me. And I've done a lot of work in the past year, um, uh, you know, developing some emotional skills, emotional maturity. Anxiety and fear are predominant emotions. So true. So anyway, this is just a, a small list. Uh, social relationships can be very shy or mute. Very true about me. Uh, people in high school and college, and even elementary school, thought I was mute. I even had one kid in high school um, ask me directly, are you mute? <laughs> no, I just, I don't talk much. That's okay. Um, I'm a great writer. I've always been a great writer and that's that's how I like to communicate. I'm very uh, articulate online. That's my that's my place where I exist socially because it's very easy to me for me to communicate and socialize through um, text, through writing. So I hope this video was informative. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't yet, Please click like and share with your friends and go visit my wife and I's channel, Angie and Haley Present, where we share to you lots of different content, mostly about relationships, um, different kinds of relationships, 
Um, we talk about love. We talk about mental health. We talk about food and recipes. Um, just all kinds of different things. So go check us out. That's Angie and Haley Present on YouTube. And also we have a Facebook and an Instagram under the same name. All right. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Till next time.